May 25th, 1961, American President Kennedy makes an appeal. I believe this nation should commit itself to achieve the goal, before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. The American astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin of the Apollo 11 mission become the first humans ever to land on the moon. And six and a half hours later, Armstrong becomes the first person ever to walk on the moon. Everybody knows about this crucial piece of history of humanity. Books have been written about it and films have been made. Conspiracy theories have been created and romantic poems about the moon were inspired by the event in the years to come. Footage of that day is forever impressed in people's minds. Watching that on television was magic. It was just like watching the FIFA World Cup, but there were no nations. The world forgot the distinctions and for a moment, we were one with the universe. All over the years, manned missions were conducted to visit our natural satellite, and Apollo 17 became the final one, taking place in 1972. But today, we finally have Artemis. Come and join us to watch the incredible journey of Artemis, the first mission to go to the moon in decades. It will be an unforgettable experience, and we hope you can take part in this special moment in the history of humanity. Don't miss out. Artemis's mission aims to land the first woman and first person of color on the moon, explore the lunar surface, and lay the groundwork for sending astronauts to Mars. Artemis is the Apollo of this generation. Those who are not alive to witness the first person to step foot on the moon will soon have their own opportunity to witness a live lunar landing. Isn't it amazing? The project is composed of three missions, Artemis 1, conceived as an uncrewed test flight to circle and fly past the moon, Artemis 2, a crewed flight beyond the moon, and Artemis 3, which will land the astronauts. This also involves spending a week performing scientific studies on the lunar surface. Artemis 3 launch is expected to take place in 2025. Of the three Artemis missions, only the first one has already been launched so far. Artemis 1 experienced four cancelled launch attempts due to engine issues and tropical storms, but it was finally launched in November 2022 from the Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Artemis 1 mission was actually successful and the spacecraft, called Orion, arrived back at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on December 30th, 2022, as the capsule splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on December 11th. Now that everything is done, we might want to go back and take a look at the crazy journey of the spacecraft. As you can see in this picture shared by NASA, Artemis 1 lifted off and entered the so-called Low Earth Orbit LEO, where it deployed the solar arrays. This happened 18 minutes after launch to start charging the spacecraft's batteries. At point 3 in the orbit, 90 minutes after launch, there was the translunar injection, a delicate operation that allowed the second stage to propel Orion to the moon. This was actually a massive boost that lasted just under 18 minutes of firing. During the mission, the Artemis real-time orbit website, Arrow, was active to track the spacecraft's flight as it was happening. Using Arrow, almost everyone with internet access can pinpoint where Orion was and track its distance from the Earth, distance from the Moon, mission duration, and more. Arrow is available on NASA's website and on the at NASA underscore Orion Twitter account. Space lovers can also look forward to a special event that was planned for the mission. On board the spacecraft were two CubeSats which were released and deployed in the lunar orbit. These CubeSats were programmed to transmit data and images back to Earth for amateur radio enthusiasts to track and pick up. One of the CubeSats, called Argo Boon and built by the Italian Space Agency, is the first Italian CubeSat to ever travel in deep space and the first to orbit around the Moon. The mission was part of a larger effort to study the lunar surface and learn more about the Earth-Moon system. The Argo Moon CubeSats will continue to transmit data and images for some time, providing a valuable resource for space enthusiasts and scientists all across the globe. These are some of the amazing images provided by this tiny little CubeSat. It's amazing to think about how far we've come, from the days of Kennedy's ambitious speech to the first human spaceflight to the Moon and now, finally, to a CubeSat 
traveling in deep space. The Argo Moon CubeSats have opened up a new era of exploration and research, where dreams of space exploration are within reach. We are excited to see what the future holds and just how far we can push the boundaries of space exploration. Having the CubeSats deployed, the second stage finally separated, and a chill four-day trip to lunar orbit followed. At this stage, corrections maneuvers were provided by the European Service Module. Finally, the main engine fired 100 kilometers above the lunar surface, at point 0.5 along the orbit. After that, at point 0.7 in the orbit, Orion, as far as 70,000 kilometers from the moon's surface, farther than any human-rated spacecraft has ever flown from Earth. After a week orbiting the moon, it was time to return home. On flight day 16, the European Service Module initiated the distant retrograde orbit departure, kicking off a slingshot sequence of orbital mechanics to use the moon's gravitational pull again and set Orion on a trip back to our planet. The capsule then ended up in the Pacific Ocean. The overall mission was successfully completed in 25 days, 10 hours and 53 minutes, with a huge distance of 1.4 million miles traveled. I hope you're enjoying the video. If you do, remember to like it and maybe subscribe to the channel. Ready to have your mind blown? The Artemis 1 mission is noteworthy for its unusual crew, consisting of zero gravity indicators and weird passengers. Zero gravity indicators are small items carried aboard spacecraft that provide a visual indicator when a spacecraft has reached the weightlessness of microgravity. NASA chose Snoopy as a zero gravity indicator on the Artemis 1 mission. For more than 50 years, Snoopy has contributed to the excitement for NASA human spaceflight missions, helping inspire generations to dream big. NASA has shared an association with Charles M. Schulz and Snoopy since the Apollo missions and continues under Artemis with new educational activities. Without astronauts aboard Orion, Snoopy, together with Sean the Sheep, will help share the journey with the world as he rides along in the cabin with a mannequin and two other passengers. The mannequin flying on Artemis 1 occupied the commander's seat, and it was wearing a first-generation Orion Crew Survival System suit, a spacesuit that astronauts will wear during launch, re-entry, and other dynamic phases of their future missions. Mannequins are important because they are also equipped with accelerometers. The collected data will be important to simulate and verify crew safety for future launches. But the commander mannequin was not alone. Two identical phantom torsos named Helga and Zohar were occupying the lower two seats. What an amazing crew! Mannequins sailing on the Orion spacecraft provide NASA and its associates with data about astronauts' work environments and well-being. This assists them in better preparing for and limiting the damage that could be caused by extended missions away from Earth, which is more remote and lengthy than any that have been attempted up until now. Everything about the Artemis mission seems to be inspiring and beautiful, but the $1 million question is, why is NASA going back to the moon? NASA is going back to the moon for a variety of reasons. One of the primary objectives is to collect data and samples that may help us better understand our own planet Earth and its history. Returning to the moon will also allow us to take advantage of the resources available there, such as water, minerals, and rare materials. Additionally, the moon is a proving ground for advanced technologies such as spacecraft and habitats, which could potentially be used to explore deeper space in the future. Furthermore, there are many scientific experiments that can be conducted on the moon, such as studying the lunar environment or even testing our ability to live, explore, and work on another world. Finally, the moon serves as an inspiring destination, symbolizing a deeper exploration of our cosmos and as a potential staging point for future expeditions to Mars, asteroids, and beyond. By returning to the moon, NASA aims to gain knowledge and resources that will help us to better understand and explore our universe. Now, with the success of Artemis 1 behind us, we can look forward to the next two parts of the mission, Artemis 2 and Artemis 3. These will be crewed flights beyond the moon and the actual landing of astronauts, respectively. NASA hopes that these missions will help lay the groundwork for sending astronauts to Mars. What do you think? Is this dream destined to become a reality anytime soon? We're excited to see what the future holds. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.
What are your thoughts about the Artemis One journey? Let us know in the comments below.